Welcome to In Pursuit. Everyone should be in pursuit of something. Join us in our discussions today with inspiring people who influence our lives and energize our understanding of what's possible. Stay in pursuit while we welcome our host, Robert Pascuzzi. All right, welcome listeners. It's a big day today. We've got my good friend and star, Sean Parr, better known as the Parr Man with us today. And Sean, everyone, as you know, should be in pursuit of something. Matt, let's tell the audience and the listeners all about Sean. Yes, awesome. Sean is uh, referred to as the ambassador of country music. Uh, he spent the uh, last 20 years on the Los Angeles country music scene. His involvement in country music spans from current radio shows to television and Academy of Country Music. Parr has a passion and a long-term involvement with country music, and he is heavily involved with the Academy of Country Music and hosted the Academy's Bash in Irvine, California in 2006. Parr is a Southern California native, grew up in Norwalk, California, and attended John Glenn High School, spending a lot of his youth in Orange County. He began his career at the at local dance venues and launched into his current career by becoming a warm-up personality for the TV show Hot Country Nights. And as the announcer for the Academy of Country Music Awards, KZLA brought him on board at the helm of the KZLA Morning Show and later to the Midday Shift. Um, his career also includes acting with roles in such films as Lucky You and Waist Deep. Parr is the voice of many award shows such as the Golden Globes, the California Speedway, numerous commercials and voiceovers, and the American Music Awards for the 16th year in a row. Thank you, Matt. Sean, welcome. How are you, my friend? Wow, I didn't even know I did all that stuff. So great, <laughs> man. I'm in pursuit of even more. We are after it today. <laughs> It's so great to have you on, Sean. And hey, listen, you uh, you know you have been the ambassador of country music, and I know you have and continue to set big goals for yourself. And you're in pursuit uh, of big things in the music arena. Can you tell the 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 listeners today currently what you're in pursuit of in the uh, in the country music scene? Well, first of all, I can't believe. It's my 32nd year as we get ready to launch a brand new chapter uh, in my career. I mean, I thought I was going to be a professional golfer. That was the goal that I had set upon myself, but that wasn't the path that I was meant to go down. However, golf has been used as the tool that has got me to the, the uh, spot where I am today, about ready to launch my own nationally syndicated radio show called Sean Parr's Across the Country, and it's going to be the biggest thing I've ever done in country music in my 33-year career. So we're really, really excited about it. And, you know, and it just goes back to once I got the taste, and this is what I love about you, Bob, and this, this show called In Pursuit, once I got the taste of what radio was about, I was working in a nightclub, and they invited me to come over and, and do the show that I was doing in the nightclub, and asked if I could do it on the air, and I was just being myself, and I thought, well, if this is what radio is, I'll give it a shot. And once I got that adrenaline rush of being on the air with a microphone and listeners calling in and, and being able to play music that actually people could hear in their cars and in their houses, I was like, okay, I am hooked. And now here you are, you know, have done so many wonderful things in your life, and you're such an inspiration to me, and always have been since you and I have got the chance to know each other, uh, starting this journey yourself. So it's truly remarkable how, you know, now we're in the same field together as brothers, and here we go on these journeys that uh, are endless uh, with possibilities, and I can't wait. Right on. <laughs> yes, it, it's so much fun. I, I mean, you know, having a big goal something that is almost illogical uh, to the conscious mind is what keeps me going. It's chasing after audacious goals and having fun doing it. And I know you subscribe to this so much in your life, Sean. How, um, tell us about your new, you know, your new show, your new gig. How did that come about? Because I know, I mean, personally, you've shared the whole story with me, um, you know, leaving Nash Nights and, and going out really on your own kind of, you know, braving a new path and and doing it on your own and tell me what that means to you and where you see that going well i think my life has always been about risks and it's always been about taking that faith and that fear 
and going after what I wanted, like I said, when I got the taste of what I wanted, I knew it could only be bigger and it could only be better. And every step of the way I had, I had people tell me the same thing. You can't do television and radio and movies. You have to pick a lane and do one thing. And I completely disagreed with that. And here we are 32 years later, having done movies, having done television, having done voiceovers, having done radio and gone from Los Angeles radio doing mornings and just got to a point where I wasn't, you know, I wasn't growing. I wasn't risking. I was getting comfortable and I wasn't fearful of anything. I felt like I could do whatever I want and I could live like this the rest of my life or I could go out and get, you know, chase a bigger dream which landed me in Nashville to do a nationally syndicated radio show on 150 stations, coast to coast, and then somebody else controlling my destiny with this company and, you know, kind of squashing my ideas uh, towards the end of my run. And then it became about finances and their finances, and they were struggling. So they had to cut me loose, which was fine because that gave me the freedom. And yes, there was fear. And yes, After you get through the doubt and the insecurities, you land um, with these amazing people. You and Kelly have have just brought me so far forward into my thinking uh, with our program and really setting those goals. And you had me set the goals high. And I sit here today so happy and so grateful now that I am embarking on this journey that I never thought I would get to uh, because I, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I didn't have the conscious mind to do it. I was, I had too much fear and too much doubt and all these things getting in my way and society getting in my way mm-hmm. and bank accounts getting in my way. So you let that go, Bob, and you were the one that taught me to let that go and just do it. And I have never, since we started this program, ever felt like this wasn't going to be successful. I am spearheading this entire thing. I don't even look at my bank account. I don't care. I'm fast forward into, I know where this train is going. I And look out, people. You either get on or get out of my way. Right <laughs> we on. We are having some serious fun. <laughs> That's great. Well, it sounds like it's an obsession now in in. You know, that old saying, sometimes it's one door closing so a better one can open. But you realized it was time to go through that door. Um, and, and, Sean, what I'm seeing in you is your concept is growing exponentially right now in terms of, of what's possible. Would you agree with that? 100%. And that's the thing. I mean, you know, when you get into that comfortable zone, you just forget about growing and you forget Mm -hmm. about really who you are and you become complacent with, yeah, okay, this is going to be me for the rest of my life. And, and, you know, some people think being a nationally syndicated radio personality. Oh, absolutely. I felt blessed and I felt, you know, gifted and wonderful. and, And I'm so honored to be here, but this is not the end of the run. This is what else can I do to better myself to get even more out of life and, and continue to chase what I've always dreamed of, and it certainly wasn't just becoming complacent and doing what I've always done. I mean, I think you have to, one of the things I've learned from you is to make it big, you've got to take big risks and you have to put yourself in a vulnerable position. And you always have to remember it's worth go. You know, you can look back. Uh, what was the, what was the thing you said, Bob? And I, and I really want you to uh, say this again about, you know, laughing, uh, you know, about something that was laughing. And then, you know, I, I, gosh, John, oh, my brain it, is, is left the building. It, was it when we, we say someday we'll look back and laugh at this and, and why not just yeah. laugh at it right now? <laughs> is that it? Laugh at it right now. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what I did when I lost one opportunity. I thanked all of my former employers. They're looking at me like, what is wrong with this guy? He's never shown any sort of, you know, like, we got him. He's down. Right. You know, they just look at me and go, this guy, there's just no stopping him. Why did we let him go? Well, I think you redefined what failure was, Sean. I mean, there is no failure. There's just experiences, right? And 
and now you're moving to the essential. You're, you're moving to creation, and you're moving to a fuller expression of who Sean Parry is. That's what I see happening. The greatest thing that could have happened was my every experience you go through, which you think is failure, you have to look at completely different. It's preparing you. Every lesson. experience is preparing you, right? Exactly. And your lesson in growth. And it just charged, instead of, you know, going down and looking inside you and poor me, you actually get fired up and go, what's next for me? Wow. They just opened the door of possibility. And I can't believe, how, well, I can believe it now, but at the time, I couldn't believe how many possibilities there were out there because this, this is everything's a possibility. Nothing is impossible. Everything is a possibility if you want it. And I'm like a little kid. I mean, you know, my energy, I, I thought I had more energy years ago when you and I first got together and I have more energy today than I've ever had in my life. And I've been happier today. My wife notices it. My friends notice it. I mean, I, I didn't think I could come any more out of my shell. I'm like soaring out of my shell. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> you know what I've learned? And I think this is what you're talking about, Sean, is things are not happening to you, but they're happening for you. And what you did is instead of reacting, you responded. There's a big difference. When we react, we give someone else the power. When we respond, we control the power and we, we take control. And what I love about you, Sean, is I really see you using your imagination in such a creative way right now. And in this show is the physical manifestation of it. And that's what is so cool. And I know you're just going to blow this thing away. You know, one of the greatest things I, when I write my book for you and Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> is that you have taught me the difference, uh, in how to react to certain things and how to process certain things and how to change the paradigm of where I was and what I used to do and what my normal, you know, what I was brought up, you know, in my lifetime as a child, the, the habits that I had to break and the complacency that I had to get rid of. And there's no project right now in front of me that is too big. And I can't wait to conquer. And I look forward to every turn and everything that is happening right now. I mean, in, even in everyday life, Bob, when you think about how you can change certain things and how you react mm -hmm. and how you respond. And you're right. Things are happening for me, not to me. And that's amazing. I think what this this is pivoted you and now what I see you working on is a, is a bigger expression uh, and, and, and Sean your energy is touching everyone I can't wait for your show to tell the audience you you go live uh, June 1 is that correct yes we are launching a brand new syndicated show called Sean Pars across the country and when I was on the, the syndicated show before we had 150 affiliates and I just I just felt like I was in the studio in Nashville and, and every once in a while people would come to Nashville for a show or something, our, our programmers. And I just wanted to go meet our team. I just didn't want to be a voice on their station. I wanted to go to Detroit, to New York, right. to Albuquerque, to Wyoming. You wanted to get to know these people you. behind the mics. Yes. I'm part of their team. They just think I'm this big nationally syndicated radio guy that would never come to Wyoming or never go to Albuquerque or never, you know, do anything for our local station. And I'm just the opposite. I want to get in front of my uh, people because we're all on the same team and say, not what can I do for you? Because we have this awesome show, but what else can I do for you? And how could I make us all be successful in your markets? And actually was, was told not to do that after a certain amount of time, because, I was making other people in our company look bad. And so that's where the idea for across the country was born. And as soon as that door closed, I got this burst of air. They think they closed the door. Actually, they opened it and gave me this opportunity for me to own my own show. And now it's my destination and it's on me to really go out and do and, and write the script 
of how I want this to turn out. And I am so blessed at the end of this movie because it's crazy. It's going to be filled with twists and turns and I'm going to get the greatest people to do the music behind it. Bob, you know all about that. <laughs> right on. You know what you were doing, but Sean? You were, when you were going out and you were seeing these folks all over the country, you were, you were bringing each one of them an impression of increase. And you're leaving, you were leaving them feeling part of something. And that's what's so cool. Everybody wants to be a part of something. And I love the word together. There's so much power in it. And you were reaching out to each one of these stations and the individuals behind and saying, let's do it together. And that's why they, that's why they are attracted to you. That's why everybody loves Sean Parr in the country music scene is you bring that energy to everyone you come in contact and you leave everyone you come in contact with, with an impression of increase. Think about the, the power of that. And listeners, I want to, I want to put this out to everybody on this show today. This is one of the things that my wife Kelly is fantastic about. And that is how she sets her intention every day. And I follow the lead is trying to leave everyone I come in contact with today with an impression of increase. And if you can do that, man, your, your day's just going to go in the right direction. It's, it's guaranteed. And I know Sean, that's how you live your life. And that's why you and I and Kelly, we've, we've just become great friends from day one because we're on that same, like I like to say frequency or vibration. You, and you can talk about that. I know. Can I share a little bit of how we got together? Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. We, uh, Bob, I met at a, a charity event in Los Angeles called unstoppable. And, uh, that's where I first heard the name Bob Proctor. And I was, I was just in awe of, I was like, Oh my gosh, there's Bob Proctor and got a chance to meet you. And then out of the blue, uh, a couple of months later, I get this phone call and it's you talking about this event that you and Kelly are going to get involved with in your hometown, uh, a wonderful charity event and, and ask me if I would come out and do it. And, the whole uh, interesting part for me was the minute I heard your voice and we talked for two minutes, I felt like I'd known you my entire life. And I was immediate, immediately at ease. And we had the, the greatest conversation. We talked for about an hour uh, about everything. And you're just like, oh, no problem. We'll get that taken care of. Here we go. I'll see you on this day. Great. You want to do that? Super. Because I don't know the word no. <laughs> and when I came into town, I had no idea what to expect. And when I met you, I, I just, I immediately felt at ease. You made this incredible impression, but I felt like you and I have been in the same, uh, synergy universe. I, I was just so compelled by you and Kelly and, and the family of people that you brought into. And now we've known each other for a few years and, right. and being a part of what we do and you and I have have created our own little history uh, with avocado toast we can talk about later. Uh, <laughs> you've, got, you've got to get your avocado toast today. Or oh, something about it. It's, like, it's just a little slice of heaven, yeah. isn't it, Sean? I introduced uh, Sean listeners to for... avocado toast the first day we met, and he's been a fanatic ever <laughs> since. We, wherever we're at around the country, we're, we're, whenever we have avocado toast, we take a picture and text it to, to one another. <laughs> it's the craziest thing because it just, that's our connection and we found that connection. And now our connection is, you know, changing the way we think, changing our paradigm and cha changing everything that we do to make sure that we're on the right path. And it's, it's an exciting time right now. As tough a time as it's been with everything this country and this world is going through and our families and our friends and our neighbors, there's so much positive that is coming out of this. And I'm so glad you used the word together because I have never felt more together with my community, with my neighbors, with my friends, with my family than I do right now. And now with my industry uh, welcoming me back with open arms after just a four month absence, they can't believe the show that we're going to put together. They really can't believe that this, this is really going to happen. He's doing this because it's been everywhere and it's exciting. Sean, to that point, um, you know, how have you been approached? Tell the, tell the listeners, how have you been approaching this time 
Uh, and what advice would you be giving to the music industry professionals like yourself who have been heavily affected by, by the COVID-19 virus? Tell us what your, your thoughts are there. You know, it's something that all of us together, again, have never experienced. This is an unprecedented time. But now we'll be able to look when we get on the other side of this, and we will, look back at how we all reacted and responded and how we all did come together. But you just have to really believe that things are going to get better, number one. Um, in the process of all of this, the, the communities have been coming together, and it's like the, the people that can go out and help, the people that are struggling are asking for the help, so it's a win-win, and we all feel like we're all on the same level. I mean, I've been out at food banks and, you know, we're putting together some food tomorrow um, to go out and feed the frontline workers at our local hospital here. 1,500 meals are going out so that we can go out and, and take care of all these people that have been on the front lines. But using a, our platform as musicians and radio people has been phenomenal. And this time to build the show, we've also been making sure that we're doing something positive for our communities and also online so that people across the country can reach out and find us. I've been reading stories on Facebook, little Dr. Seuss stories to the families that have the kids at home and, and even just people that have known me for the last 30 years in radio that have heard my voice. And now they can actually see me reading these stories right. it's just in how you give back and how you decide how you're going to respond to something like this, how you're going to react and, and make something work. A sad, a bad situation for a lot of people and our country and a lot of, you know, people around the world, you can look for the light and look for the positive and look for the opportunity to get out and serve. Right. Right. You know, because so many people around the world have been involuntarily disrupted through this virus and what I have come to, you know, to believe is, you know, obviously in the big sense of the, of the, the idea, we don't control anything, right? So if things happen, we don't have control over, it's how we're, we're going to respond. And a lot of that is determined by the meaning that we attach to any event in our life, because the meaning is going to determine what we're willing to do or not do. Uh, because if we, you know, think about an, an empowering meaning to this situation or a disempowering, it's going to have a dramatic effect on how we move forward. And what I believe, and I know what you're saying here, Sean, is something very, very positive will come out of this because it's it's the law of polarity, which states that for every bad situation, there is an equal and positive situation that will come from it. The question is to the listeners in my mind is, what is the meaning for you? We've got to develop a new meaning and a new approach to how we're looking at this. And I think that we can all find things in our lives. I know for Kelly and I, our three boys are, are home. Um, they're 22, 19 and 17. And, you know, we typically don't see them that much, but we've had some amazing family time that we otherwise would not have had. And uh, I don't know if that's how they feel about it at this point after seven weeks, but, <laughs> but <laughs> Kelly and I have loved it. I think they're ready to get out of the house, but that that's a great point that you're making, Sean, because it's the little things that we can do each day to make a difference. And again, to leave everyone we come in contact with, with an impression of increase. So I appreciate you, uh, you sharing that. Um, the last question I think I want to, I want to throw your way is okay. what advice I want you to maybe help out there. There's gotta be somebody that's listening to this show that's thinking about this. What advice would you give to a listener who's trying to get, you know, or has interest in getting into the, the music scene right now or breaking in? What advice would you looking back and seeing how you did it? What advice would you, would you offer up? Well, if you want to be a country singer and uh, my son is the prime example, he's a Southern California born and raised, I believe uh, somebody's been doing this for a while. He has a lot of talent. Uh, the one thing he lacked was, was discipline. And he just thought that he could, you know, dad's in Nashville. I can just fly to Nashville. Dad knows everybody. And I'm just going to go there and I'll be on tour in a couple of, mm -hmm. couple of months. I'll, uh, 
I'll be an opening act. The one thing you have to do is everything possible that you could possibly think of. First of all, you have to get to Nashville because that's where country music happens. That's where the industry is. It's a very small town, even though it is a very big town. Everybody knows everybody in every record label. There, Everybody knows everybody. So once you can get your foot in any door, you get you you do it. And that goes for radio, too. If you've ever thought about broadcasting or getting into radio or doing anything like that, we have a lot of people that ask me that as their interns um, that come into the radio station. They say, how can I do this? How can I get into radio? And I said, you're in radio. You're interning. You're inside the building. There are people, or hundreds of thousands of people around the world that are not inside the door, that have trained, gone to schools, paid good money, to mm-hmm. think they can get a radio job that can't get in the door. You have a key that gets you in the building every day. What are you going to do with that key? And that goes for anything you do in your life. What is that? You've got the key. Right. Your foot's in the door in Nashville, your your key, if you're the intern to the building, you can use that whole building to build your resume, to do a demo tape, to ask for directions, to get guys like me to take you into a studio and show you the boards and then turn you loose and train you and let you have fun and create your own show and your own identity. You have the key. The question is, what are you going to do with the key? There you go. And therein lies the secret to success. <laughs> the secret to life, right? <laughs> yeah, because we're all we're all created equal in that sense. And, and some come into situations a little bit tougher than others, granted. But then it's what are we going to do with it? Because there there's always a way. And I, I believe in this theory that if you want something bad enough, Sean, you'll find a way, right? There's always a way. And the way that I that I become very focused in that sense is is my thought is reasons come first answers come second so if you get a re- enough reasons why you want to do something you will find a way and i know that's what you're doing right now i love that and i love that philosophy too i didn't write down one or two or five i wrote down 25 reasons why this is going to work and yeah there you go every reason that i had that that somebody that said it can't work, I said, here are five reasons why what you just said will work. And I just refuse to let anybody say, I can't. The word can't, that powerful four-letter word that we all know is so in our lives every single day doesn't exist in mine anymore. And you have taught me, you and your beautiful wife, Kelly, have taught me so much about getting rid of that word and turning it into another four letters that make more sense to me. I can. There you go. I can. And words are things, Sean. We've, we've learned that through thinking and the results, right? Words are things. So we have to be so, so cognitive or conscious rather of the words we speak, not just the words we speak out loud. We verbalize, but the, the conversations we're having in our mind and the other pieces do we recognize the opportunity? Because Sean, you, you, when, when you left, um, your, your old gig and, and you looked at this and you said, well, you know what? The meaning is going to be everything here. The meaning I attach to this, because I'm going to look at this through a lens that says there's an opportunity here. And, And it always doesn't look like, or appear to look like what we think it's going to be at the beginning. But oftentimes what I found, and I know this is what you, you found over and over again, and you're finding here is that it's actually much greater, it's much bigger, it's much more awesome than what we even thought of. I mean, and and that's what I'm hearing in your voice, the excitement, the enthusiasm, and I am so ready for you to crush this thing on June 1. We are going to come out swinging. The way I like to, to look at it right now is we have this Ferrari that is in the garage, and we have every single piece of, the engine that we have put together is top notch and we've worked so hard on this and it's a given. I just can't wait to drive it and get it down the road. And the greatest thing about this show is going to be the adventure. 
I'm not worried about the radio stations. I'm worried about the people, not worried about, but uh, I'm focusing on the people that we get to meet along the way, the places we get to see along the way, and sharing that across the country with all of our listeners from New York to California and everywhere in between is the adventure, I think, that everybody needs, I believe, right now. Imagine if you got to follow this journey on your radio every night while you're in quarantine or you're looking for something positive and you have this guy going across the country talking to people on the street, helping people at food banks, uh, taking care of all the people on the front line, saluting our truckers, not just with words, but stopping at a truck stop and talking to the truckers that are there on their way to their next destination. And you're hearing about his story and he's missing his family and gets a chance to say on the air across the country how much he does love and cherish his wife and kids that are at home and he'll be home soon. That's so the kind good. of stuff that excites me. So good, Sean. It's Sean Parr's across the country starting June 1. And look what, ladies and gentlemen, listen to Sean. He started with just an idea in his mind. And now look where it's gone. Sean, you're on, impacting so many lives. You're going to continue to do that. And I would just want to ask one more question. And I know I said that before, but... I've got many, many questions, but let's go with this one and then we'll wrap this thing. But I absolutely love music and I've always got it playing in our home because I just, the vibration it sets, I'm always in a better mood. It changes my energy and it changes my focus. Tell the listeners, what is music? What does it do for you, Sean? Music heals me. Music has been such a big part of my life. Uh, since I can remember my grandfather listening to all of his music. I mean, he was at the big band swing music and, uh, you know, and then he listed the old country and I grew up with my next door neighbors listening to, you know, all the hard rock and heavy metal. And my mother was an Elvis Presley fanatic. And I went through everything that, that he did with her. And, you know, when we lost the the king of rock and roll and music has always been there in my life when, you know, we've, we have our losses when we celebrate whatever it is we're going through, whatever feeling we're going through, or we need to experience that song, that note, that sound can deliver it to us mm-hmm. when we least expect it. Music is always there. And you're right. It changes you. It can lift you up. You, you have so much, so many choices now. You, it can, you can just push the button and your, your mood can change immediately. Music has always been a part of my life and that's why I love it all. And I get to, I'm so blessed that I get to play it. I'm so grateful that I get to play music for a living and have for over 30 years. Amen. And, and Sean, so you got your great hair from Elvis Presley, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. oh man sean yeah, has glad, some awesome hair ladies my, and gentlemen yeah <laughs> yeah my grandfather was the, my my poor brothers too both of my brothers have my grandfather's hair he is, is he's the cue ball in the family <laughs> and my two brothers are exactly the same and i'm i don't know where i got it from but it's like it, and, and it's, it hadn't been cut in a long time, so here we go. And, and those jackets too, Shano. Those jackets you wear. I mean, where do you? Where do I get one of those? Leaving those lasting impressions, Bob. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Making that people. It's the oh wow factor that we love so much, and the energy. Those jackets give me energy, which in turn gives the the crowd. When you know you've seen it, all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the live auction jacket. And here comes somebody with a jacket. They take it out of the, you know, wrap that it's in. You're like, whoa! And oh I put my on the lord! Sequin jacket. You gotta have energy after that, right? Folks, if you haven't seen Sean uh, MC a live charitable event, you're missing out. Catch one coming to your area soon. But also, oh, can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Sean Parr, June 1. It's Sean Parr's Across the Country kicking off June 1. Don't miss it. This thing's going to be epic. And it, Sean, it has been such a pleasure and an honor to have you on in pursuit. Thank you, my friend. 
This has been another special edition of In Pursuit with your host, Robert Pascuzzi. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed our program. And remember, everybody should be in pursuit of something.